Hi, and welcome to another Pickaxe tutorial. Today, we're walking you through how to configure your Pickaxe knowledge base settings. Whether you're creating a chat style or a form style Pickaxe, these settings are crucial for fine tuning your AI's performance and ensuring it delivers the best results possible. Let's get started. Let's get started with the Learn tab. We'll start off with the knowledge base. In this section, you could upload files or add URLs, which the pickaxe is going to scrape and then convert into vector format in the backend. Right here to the right, you can toggle your sources on or off, and that would determine if the chatbot is going to use them to recall on information. Also, whenever you don't want a source, you could just click the delete button right here and that will get rid of it for you. Now we're going to focus on this little button right here, the Knowledge Explorer. This is a helpful tool that lets you test your knowledge base by running a sample query and reviewing how the AI retrieves and scores data from your uploaded documents. Use this to ensure the knowledge base is working as expected and that the AI is pulling the right information. Now let's dive into the relevancy cutoff. A lower threshold around 20 means that documents or tokens are included more often, even if they are less relevant. A higher threshold, on the other hand, closer to 90, ensures that only highly relevant tokens are included. Next, we're going to take a look at the amount. Think of this as maximum data retrieval control. This defines the amount of text the AI pulls from each query. For example, if your pickaxe is designed to retrieve laws and regulations, you might set the limit to 2,500 characters to ensure concise, user-friendly results. Think about the end user experience and adjust the limit accordingly. Now let's focus on the context settings. Here you'll provide a central background to help the AI interpret your documents. Avoid referencing specific sections or paragraphs. Instead, include general descriptions that give the AI a big picture of understanding. For example, if your pickaxe targets the insurance industry, you might write something along the lines of, these regulations are from an insurance provider. This ensures that the AI has the right context to deliver accurate and relevant responses. Now head over to the configure tab to refine how your pickaxe processes and responds to data. Start with token lengths. This section controls the size of the data the AI processes and outputs. For the maximum output length, set the limit for how long responses can be. For example, 2000 tokens is ideal for short essay length reply. The input length determines how much the user's query the AI considers. And 3000 tokens is a great default. Lastly, the memory buffer stores context for multi-turn conversations. And 3000 tokens works well here too for most projects. Next, let's talk about the training dialogue section. This feature is especially useful once your pickaxe is live and users are actively engaging with it. To set this up effectively, you'll need to monitor the backend user interaction data, look for frequently asked questions or reoccurring queries that are not covered by your knowledge base or the core prompt. Once you've identified these gaps, create a fallback response to address them. By adding training dialogues, you ensure that your pickaxe remains helpful and responsive even when the knowledge base doesn't have a direct answer. Regularly updating this section based on user interactions will ensure constant improvements of the AI's effectiveness over time. Now locate the creativity settings slider. For serious applications like legal or technical tools, keep the slider lower for more reliable and precise outputs. For example, 0.6. For more creative or entertainment-based pickaxes, on the other hand, you want to increase the slider slightly to the right, but don't go too high to avoid AI hallucinations. This adjustment allows you to strike the right balance between creativity and accuracy. 
Finally, let's move to the prompt tab to explore some additional options. One powerful optional feature is the allow users to upload file setting. This allows users of your pickaxe to upload their own documents or images to the knowledge base. They can then query these uploads directly through your pickaxe. This feature is particularly useful for tools designed for document analysis personalized support, or collaborative problem solving. However, enabling it depends entirely on the purpose of your pickaxe and the experience you want to create for your users. Next, focus on the prompt injection section. For example, you might add a reminder to the AI like, always reference the uploaded knowledge base for answers before generating your own response. Only the AI will see this prompt so it won't be visible to your users. Use this section to reinforce critical rules or behaviors that are essential for your pickaxe's functionality. Now let's talk about the core prompt section. Think of this as an employee handbook for your pickaxe. It defines the AI's role, tasks, outputs, and how to use the tools available in the knowledge base or the connected actions to the pickaxe. By setting up clear guidelines, you're giving your pickaxe all the tools it needs to perform consistently and effectively. Regularly update the core prompt as your pickaxe evolves to ensure it stays aligned with your goals. And that's it. You've now learned how to configure the learn tab, configure tab, prompt tab, and your core prompt to fine tune your pickaxe and unlock its full potential. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments section below. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. And be sure to join our Pickaxe community to connect with other creators, share ideas, and get support. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next tutorial.